The number one problem that we have in this country is our education system. This is the result of a poor education system. The number of unemployed in the United States today, 7.5 million. Number of job openings, 5.6 million. There is a huge disconnect. And the reason there is a disconnect is because we are not teaching for what the job world wants. Here are the facts, and this is true for college graduates too. Young people today are three times as likely as their parents to be out of work. Three times. And employers still can't find people with the right skills. And these are entry-level skills. So why is that? This is what employers want. They want creative employees, creative, critical thinkers, good communicators, good collaborators, independent lifelong learners. This is what they want, flexibility. This is what they're getting. I'm a teacher, so I know. Students who follow directions. Students who are great test takers. They're all getting, their number one target is do well on those AP exams. And students whose solitary goal is getting into college. Yesterday, I had a visitor who asked my class what it was they wanted to do to change the world. And they all sat there very quiet. And I can tell you, they're never quiet. <laughs> so, we need to give them an opportunity to think about what they want to do to change the world and not just how to get into college. So today's students have no power. Eric Hoffer, Presidential Medal Award winner, he said, the only way to predict the future is to have the power to shape it. But students don't have any power to shape anything not even their learning, because they're all targeting the same test to get into college. So it's a control issue. Schools want control. They want these statistics. Oh, our students got into X or Y, Ivy League. Teachers want control. I went to graduate school of education here at Berkeley. I came out of that school with a degree these books, not ex these exact ones, but very similar. Everyone wants to control the students. If you go to Google and type in classroom control, you will get 150 million results. <laughs> Everyone wants to control them. So what can we do to improve our education system? How can we make it so that we have more of a connection? So, three important concepts. Number one, students learn by doing, not by watching or listening. If we all learn by watching, we'd all be Olympic swimmers, because we all watch the Olympics. <laughs> Learning must be integrated into the real world. Make it relevant. And the third, the more you do for students, the less empowered they are. It just makes sense. You want to empower the students, so you want them to do it as much as they can. So, Kurt Carlson, who's the CEO and president of SRI International, came up with these 10 things that he said are part of a classroom that works. I'll talk about the first five. Doing. That's just what I said. Real-time feedback, it doesn't just have to be from the teacher, it can be from peer-to-peer -peer interaction. But feedback, multiple representations, in other words, multiple opportunities to do the task or whatever it is so that you get it right. Teams, 
Work in teams. How do you think people work in companies? They work in teams and mentors. Every student should have some kind of a mentor. Couldn't be a ninth grader, could be mentored by a 12th grader. They all need mentors. Here's an example of my class. These kids are doing. Notice there's no teacher there telling them what to do. They are mentoring each other. They are working together on a project that matters to them. Here's another example of the class. How about giving students 20% of the time to start? So for 80% of the time, you can still lecture to them. This is what we have going here at Berkeley. I know that since I was here for a long time. I love Berkeley. But it was all lecture-based. How about letting students control their learning 20% of the time? Just put your toe in the water. Let's see how effective it is. Let's make learning personal so students want to learn for the sake for learning and not just to get a grade. That's what we're all worried about. What is my grade? So we need to change the mindset of the teacher. That's the number one thing. The teacher needs to think of themselves as a guide on the side and not a sage on the stage. So notice this photo of me, and that I'm a guide on the side, and no one is paying attention to me. <laughs> They didn't need me, clearly, at that time. This is the trick for the culture of the classroom. How do you get this happening in the classroom? I wrote this book called Moonshots in Education. I created this acronym to help people remember what really belongs in a classroom. Trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. That is what belongs, and trust is really number one, which is why it's listed number one. Trust and respect. Give students some respect for their ideas. Who knows what it will result in? I mean, who would have ever guessed that we would have a phone in our pocket years ago, when Steve Jobs first started? So these are the skills that students get in a project-based classroom. There's many of them. Risk-taking, grit, resilience, problem-solving, Tolerance, ethics, I can't read them all, there's quite a few of them. These are all the skills students get when they learn to work together in teams on projects. This is what we want to encourage. This is what the employers are looking for. So I use journalism as a way to teach kids to think. I think journalism is the literacy for the digital age. Journalism students can figure out fake news from real news because they are involved in it. They understand what news is. They can write all the formats. But you don't have to just take journalism. We just need a curriculum that'll fit into English classes or social studies classes that would teach this. It teaches the four C's, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, communication. This is the assessment. This is the publications that come out of the program that I founded at Palo Alto High School. It is now the largest media program in the United States with 600 students and 10 publications. This publication comes out every three weeks. It is three sections, 24 to 28 pages. This is a magazine that comes out with it. It looks a little like the New York Times Tea Magazine, and it does because the kids thought that was a good magazine. They probably, and they copied their idea. Good idea. Here is Verde. This is a news magazine. These are all done by students, and by the way, it's all self-supported. They raise the money for these publications through advertising. These are full-fledged classes getting A to G credit from University of California. This is a sports magazine. 
You're not interested in news or entertainment? How about sports? This is Foreign Affairs magazine. Students said they weren't listening to us enough. Well, how about we'll write our own Foreign Affairs magazine? This is the kind of student that comes out of the program. They're not just journalists. They're in all fields, doctors, lawyers, but they're empowered students who get to do what they feel passionate about. Jeremy Lin, clearly not a journalist, a basketball player. Gotti Epstein, he's a journalist. He is the media editor for The Economist magazine. Before that, he was the head of the China Bureau for The Economist in Beijing. This is my most famous student. <laughs> James Franco. Okay, he didn't become a journalist, but he became a man of the world. He's a Renaissance guy. He's an artist. He is also an actor, a director. And this is what he said in the introduction to my book. She showed me I could take my dreams as seriously as I wanted. All students should have a mentor. So where do we start? Teacher professional development, so that the teacher is the key to good instruction in the classroom. Videos to show teachers what it looks like to give some kids, kids some control. And number three, but probably the most important, discussions with administrative office, admission officers in major universities to try to help them see that this type of learning results in the type of student that we want. We need to empower all students, all students, with 21st century skills so they can shape the future. As Eric Hoffer said, and I said earlier, the only way to predict the future is to have the power to shape the future. So let's give them the power to shape the future. Shakespeare said, it's not in the stars our destiny. It is in ourselves. Let's give students the power to control their destiny. Thank you.